I'm a chef, a connoisseur, and I own and operate Shanghai's number one Vietnamese restaurant. I love to travel, discover, and more importantly, I love to eat. Join me on my culinary adventure across China and beyond. Starting our adventure in Shanghai has special meaning for me. Being an American-born Chinese, I'm instantly reconnected to my heritage. And what better way to connect with the culture than through its people, and of course, its food. In China, food and the process of eating food is especially important. That's when families come together, stories are told and passed on, and foundations that last forever are built upon. Shanghai conceals some secret culinary gems. And like most of how things are run here, it's not what you know, but who introduces you. And a good friend of mine introduced me to this Nick's hidden treasure. Let's go see if I can still remember where to find it. Hey guys, today actually is cold orange for the weather, which is so hot, and we're gonna have a thunderstorm. Right now the rain's dropping, but we're going to one of the most hidden restaurants in Shanghai right now. It's called the Cannon House Restaurant. Let's check it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, so tight here, man. Craziness. In Western world, most restaurants actually have waiter and waitresses actually to take your order. But in this restaurant, it's totally different. Check this out. This poster says, hello? Please order your own food and write it on it. Thank you. Well, the reason why they only do it is because they want to cut costs. They don't want to hire an extra waiter or waitresses. And you know what? That's the way you manage a restaurant, to save some more costs. Yeah. Well, after a short visit of the kitchen, the food dishes are already here. Well, the reason why they're here is because they're cold dishes. And Shanghainese usually like to eat cold dishes before the hot dishes come. So why don't we check it out here? We got some pig stomach, actually cooked in a really slow simmer method and basically it's cold and then we have these chicken paws I mean I know a lot of foreigners don't like to eat this but you know it's a really good delicacy here mm. flavor is awesome it's kind of gelatinous and the flavor really gets in all the skin man you gotta try this out and it's great for the skin as well Sorry, I gotta eat. Mmm. The cow stomach, very chewy, very elastic, and good flavor with the soy sauce that they provided here with some sesame seed oil. You got two chairs in there, huh? Oh, see, 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 see. This is Chai Yapo, ah. Ah. Yapo, the. This is Chai Yapo. Ah. 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 Hey guys, with the boss away, we're gonna introduce all the dishes that I'm gonna have tonight. Look at this, it's actually cow stomach, stir fry in red pepper and green pepper with a sweet and spicy sauce. Mm, I think it's good, but let me try first. Mm. Chewy, really good flavor. Then we have one of the director's favorite dish here. Basically stew eggplant with some green peppers and soy sauce. And now this is actually fava beans, sauteed with uh, scallion oil and quick, and it's really, really good as well. In the summertime, that's when the season is, and it's really good, really healthy. This is actually a very, very famous dish in Shanghai. 
what they have is, is a really small fish and they call it yellow fish. And what they do is they mix it with some spice and some flour and then what they do is deep fry it. The flavor is phenomenal. And it's a very simple dish. Sauté vegetables with some gluten on top. Very soft, very bright green flavors. This is one of my favorite dish. It's actually kind of like bamboo shoots, but a much younger version of it. Sauté in soy sauce, some chilies. Very crunchy, basically absorb all the flavor and it's great texture and only available in the springtime. And then finally, we got some really great clams here. And then just saute with some scallion oil. And the final and the best dishes, a lot of people don't dare to eat it. It's actually stinky tofu. I love it, I eat it like this. Mm. Once you fry it, it's so crispy and it's not that stinky anymore. I recommend anyone try it at least once in their lifetime. You know what's best after spicy food? It's good beer. Hey guys, I want to show you guys this tiny room. It's full of a lot of age and a lot of feelings in here. And a lot of people eat here already. Check this out. I love this little sign here, please don't touch. But it's so old, it doesn't even stick on it anymore. And also what they do is they use this clip to clip it so that it actually comes in in the real direction. Then right here, check out the window. The window doesn't open here. So I don't know what the window is for, but it's cool. And then I'm gonna show you the last thing. With this great thing, most Chinese are very religious and they believe the religious figure would bring them good fortune. That's why they always put incense to make sure that they have good fortune here. This is it, a small dining room. One of the most well-known restaurants in Shanghai serving strictly Shanghainese cuisine, this next venue has been operating for around 20 years and has certainly seen the dynamic changes Shanghai has experienced in recent times. Though they have somehow managed to keep the traditional and unique style and taste that is Shanghainese. Hi guys, this is my new co-host, Kat. So, um, you know, while we're out, out there, you know, we look at this restaurant, it looks like a normal apartment, but actually this is one of the most prestigious Chinese restaurants in Shanghai. Uh, today we actually have some pro dishes to start with, and uh, that we actually introduce. This looks them. interesting. Yeah, it looks actually, like some kind of mushroom. What is it, Fred? This is actually not mushroom. This is actually soy products. And what they do is um, they make the soy products. Oh, thank you. And then um, they actually fry it, and after that they actually soak it in soy sauce. What I want to tell you today about Shanghainese cuisine is about Shanghainese cuisine. Basically, the most uh, important ingredient is number one is uh, soy sauce, number two is a lot of oil, and number three is sweetness. Definitely taste that in this. Exactly. So, why don't we try to get a little bite of this? Well, right here we have real chicken, <laughs> and this is actually called drunken chicken. And what they do is they use fish sauce, they use uh, Shaoxing rice, wine, and then what they do is they cook the chicken and they just let it soak and let it cool down for over 12 hours so that all the flavor actually gets into the chicken itself. Why don't we have a little bite? Let's do it. Let me one. This is my favorite dish and this is one of the most famous dish in this restaurant. Mm, you can really taste the um, alcohol in that, right? Absolutely. And Chinese actually likes to um, cook chicken in a very slow way so that the texture of the chicken is still very, very tender. The skin is very, very elasticity. You know, it's kind of very soft, bouncy type of flavor. And all the flavor actually gets in there as well. And every bite that you actually eat the chicken, the, the, the chicken flavor actually comes out. And that, most of the chicken that they use in this dish is actually organic chicken. Unlike you know in the US, yeah, it's not, unlike you know KFC, they raise all the chicken in the farm. Of course, this one mostly are organic. I'm excited to find out what this is. 
some kind of pork, mm. honey glaze, or? Well, we got four hot dishes right here. It's a very famous Chinese uh, hong xiao rou, which is called red stewed pork. Okay, let me give you a piece right here. It's actually pork slowly stewed with uh, brush sugar, soy sauce, and oil for about you know half an hour to an hour. Mm. All the sauce is taking this chopsticks. Come, you slowly simmer all the sugar. The flavor really coats this whole pork dish. And also, the meat's been cooked for like half an hour to one hour, so the meat is very tender as well. The Chinese love to eat this dish with a bowl of rice, and I can eat at least two or three bowls, you know, with just a few pieces of that. It's quite different to that one. Oh, yeah, I mean, the flavor is much stronger, and it's much more there, but more decadent as well. We'll move on to this dish, actually. What they do is they have this called a uh, yellow cro uh, croaker. And what they do is they deep fry this fish. You see this whole thing right there. How do you eat this I'll thing? I'll cut it in a little bit. You know. <laughs> Let me do it for you. Chinese love the head, but I don't. I'm going this for you in a bit. It could be quite messy. Yes. Well, I mean, the Chinese love to eat fish with bones in them because they do think that, you know, there's more flavor in the fish itself. But in the West, I mean, you always eat fillets and it's always boneless. For me, I always like to serve my guests with just a piece of meat because then they don't have to... So are you supposed to dip it in the sauce? This is actually a nice vinegar because they, they fried it. They want to cut the greasiness. It's almost like, you know, fish and chips and what they do is you just put some malt vinegar on it. Let's try it. Let's try it too. Wow, it really is like kind of Chinese fish and, well, there's no chips, but... One more thing, you know, sometimes when you eat this fried part of fish, there's always some parts that's not really fried in there. So some parts are very crunchy, and some parts... I'm going to take out the bone. Otherwise, your stomach's gonna hurt later on tonight. Fred, this vegetable looks like it's bleeding. It is bleeding. I mean, it's because the vegetable is actually red in color, and it actually has really good coloring in there, and the color is good for you. It has a lot of vitamins and a lot of nutrients in it. And what this dish is, the, this vegetable only available for four months in a year. It's very tender in just four months, and it's good with basically cooked in some uh, ch uh, chicken stock or basically stir fry. Some of them actually is green color, some of them is red color. The red ones actually I like better because the, the presentation is better. When you eat it, you have more appetite for it. Let's eat some dessert. I'm a fool already. Starving. I want some sweet taste in my mouth. This is actually called Dou Sha Guo Bing. It's actually a thin crepe that wrapped in uh, red bean paste. And after that, they actually Fry it so that you actually get this really crispy skin and nice, soft, warm, like red bean paste in the middle. And also, some restaurants actually like to do date, um, basically uh, cooked dates in there. Cooked dates is actually a very traditional style of Chinese dessert, but nowadays they don't actually do it anymore, and most of them actually use red bean paste. I like, I really, really love the, the, the date square, but it's really, really hard to find, and no chef is actually doing it anymore. It's strenuous because you gotta cook the dates, you basically gotta skin it, and you gotta mash it, and you gotta fine it. That takes hours just to make a very simple dish, and no good chef is doing it anymore. It's almost like a lost tradition. But I'm happy with you the red bean. Well. I would, I would, for sure. Have another bite? I gotta give you the, one of the last pieces. Fred, I'm, I'm, just, I'm so full. <laughs> Come on now, it's almost the last piece already. <laughs> you know, I'll finish this as well, okay? Overall, you know, when you walk past this restaurant, you wouldn't know it's one of the best restaurants in Shanghai. They received many accolades from TV stations, organizations, and magazines, especially New York Times. Every single dish here is actually has some traditional scents, and also there's some new flavors in here as well. Traditional as in like Chinese, you got some old like soy sauce, sweetness, and oil in it. And new sense meaning like a lot of dishes actually doesn't have a lot of oil in it. That's why a lot of customers, like expats, you know, internationally love to come here. It's not too oily when you finish the meal. And if you ask me overall, 
This is one of the best Chinese restaurants for sure in Shanghai. And let me finish this last piece and I'll tell you what's the best. For sure, this is the best. What better way to dive into a complex culture than to enter into an all-enticing, eye-bulging, multi-sense tingling food street market with smells, sights, and sounds constantly trying to penetrate from a 360 degree front? This local food street is my place to be. <laughs> So we can pick like anything we want. Well, this is a barbecue buffet. You can just order exactly what you want on it. And what they would do is this guy right here, shirtless, just grilling everything to perfection. Okay. Well, he wants uh, a free advertising yeah. moment. So, <laughs> so he wants to show everyone how they're grilling everything. I'm sure he's grilling at least like 20 orders at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, everything is stacking on there, you know, on top of each other. And you really need to know, you know, what's the special things and which one I should have juices dripping down and which one doesn't to cook everything in perfection. Okay guys, uh, we just got a new dish coming in. This is actually raw shrimp and marinated with sugar, vinegar, and Shanghainese loves this. This is yes. a very classic Chinese dish. Yes. Huh? Here you go. It's Thanks. So it's raw? It's raw. Okay. No, no, no. Oh. But before that, we got I mean, I like new sashimi, one. so it's like a type of uh, raw beef. Wow. 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 Yes. Yeah. So the shrimp, do I use finger or just bite? Yes, you can use your finger or just bite. Or, or bite, bite it if you want. All together. <laughs> I think I just use finger. Me too. I like to take the skin off first. Me too. On my teeth. So now you have the shrimp. Raw. So much flavor in this. It's a little bit of soy, a little salty. It's a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of um, sourness to it. Wow, very good. Wow. I can smell these barbecue already. Look at these. Wow. Hey, ladies, go ahead. Why don't we try some? Let's start with the seafood. Wow. Thank you. That's my favorite. There you go. Can't mm. wait. Mm. The fong fong. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, it smells very good. Garlic. 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 And after it's a pen. Oh, please, help yourself. Mm. Mm. And more of these as well. I do love this. Oh, let me try everything a little bit. Mm. Wow. Really good. Mm. Mm. This is how you eat barbecue, man. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. You asked me why did I order a cake? It's not really as simple as a cake, you know? I mean, we're having some barbecue, we're having some cold dishes. It's good to eat it with some starch so that we can actually complement the dish and have a good meal together. So what this cake is all about is actually made from flour and they put special poison sauce in the middle and then also they deep fry this cake so that it's nice and crispy on the outside. Here you go, ladies. Here's one for you. Thank you. This is a. Can I change a smaller piece? Because <laughs> we have so much more coming. Yeah, a small one for me. No problem. That's perfect. You always have oh, to. Oh, this is small. Watch your figure. <laughs> you know me. 
this looks good. Well, why don't we try this? Okay. So we are going. The good thing about this show is that we always eat. Mm. Mm. Bite it. Very hot. Mm. Nice and warm. It's hot on the outside, crispy, and it's soft on the inside. Very, very hot because it just deep fried it. What is inside? It's fermented soybeans, it's salty, it's sweet. You know, basically many regions of Chinese cuisine uses that. The North use it for bread, the South use it for noodles and things like that. And basically a lot of the dishes, a lot of the meats are marinated with the hoisin sauce as well. Yes. Well, we got two new appetizers on the, mm. on the what table. What is that? This is called uh, spit chicken. It's actually spit a chicken. Yeah, spit. Hou sui ji. Okay. Are you really talking about spitting? Yeah. <laughs> because it's so good. I mean, people always think, oh, it's kind of like spitting, you know? <laughs> Basically, it's just chicken with a nice, really spicy sauce. A lot of hot oil. And you know, a lot of flavor, peanuts, soy sauce, a little vinegar, um, some parsley. And what it is, what's best eaten is got some bread. Mm. And you just. Wow. So you can actually go with the bread. Yes, that's the reason why I ordered bread in the first place. Oh. Sure. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna try this. One of the reasons why I put oil on the bread as well is... Mm, oh my god. In China, you don't have butter all the time. Wow. So, I mean, all this hot oil, you can soak it with a piece of bread and all wow, the flavors so you're getting out of it. Mm. Mm. So it's actually really healthy, this one. I wouldn't go as far as really healthy, but it's mm. tasty. Tasty and healthy, that's the best. I can taste the um, Szechuan peppercorn. Mm -hmm. It's a little spicy, a little nummy, mm. and the way they use sesame seed oil is very fragrant. So just a little bit of it make this bread really, really good. Look at yeah, this. This is very mm. good. Mm. Mm. And then you got some vinegar. The flavor is good. Mm. 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 It's better than any, like many of the restaurants that I've been. Yeah. Yeah, true. And it's like street food. Mm. Yeah. This chicken is very, very tender, very yeah. smooth. Silky smooth. Exactly. Silky is the word for this mm. chicken. Well, I mean, tonight I'm actually having a plastic bottle beer for the first time tonight. I don't know what it tastes like. I don't know what it is. I've been here seven years, but it's the first time. This is very cute. Oh, have plastic. You guys tried it's plastic. It's plastic. Yeah, it's yeah. plastic. Well, let's have a let's have a drink. Mm. Oh. Nice and cold. Oh. Wow. Strong. Good. It's not bad actually. It's pretty hoppy. Very reasonable. Good flavor balance. I would drink it again for sure. Any difference between this beer and the beer? No, actually, this is better than a lot of the local beers. I think. But in a plastic package, I mean, I'll buy it again if I see it. I think plastic is very uh, more convenient. Well, ladies, let's try some of these uh, lofa and beans. green beans. One some for you. Some for you. And some for me. Life is good. Good food. <laughs> beautiful ladies. And fanny me. Oh. What else can I ask for? I'm in Shanghai, the best city in the world. We're right? lucky with the food <laughs> Shanghai, the new city of dreams. One can only imagine where Shanghai will be 5 to 10 years from today. Either way, there's only one thing I can guarantee from my time here. That is, it will always be for me a melting pot of faces, feelings, and flavors.